when we talk about investment, what is actually what we should all be doing is to be doing businesses. We are supposed to come up with uh, value creation ideas that will ensure that we do we create direct values. For example, you are into goods, you are into service, you are into the goods and all that. But then we always find that uh, not everyone can do direct business in terms of creating direct value. For example, when you talk about uh, sugar, you, what comes to mind is Dangote. When you talk about salt, you remember Dangote. And, um, you know, people are in oil industry, they, are, they cut across services, people cut across services and goods. Those are areas where the majority of us should actually be found. But unfortunately, some of us are cut out for services of businesses. So in a financial circle, there's what we call financial intermediation. And what does that mean? What it means is that um, there are people who belong to the surplus category. They have more than they need at a point. In. So there is what we call financial intermediation. And what that means is you have, you have in, a, in an economy, you have surplus units. And those are the people who have more money than they need. If you like, say they have more resources than they need. Then you have the deficit unit. Those are the people who need more than they have. So financial intermediation is the process by which the surplus units and deficit units are brought together. So through, the, through intermediation, you provide the handshake that is necessary to ensure, ensure that the surplus resources in the house, surplus units flow to the areas where they have less than they need. So what we are all doing essentially say we are to invest in is that we are more or less exchanging our surplus resources by giving them to those who need the resources to carry out either production of services, uh, I mean, entry of services or production of goods. Now, when we talk about strategies, you are actually talking about how to go about it. And of course, when you talk about investment, too often we're actually talking about flow of money most of the time. Now, um, I would like to simplify this. I mean, we are not here to talk about academics because you might start using some of these uh, terminologies that they use in finance circles. You find some of our people just switch off. So I'll try to make it as relatable as possible, just like the last uh, speaker when he was talking about um, transportation and all that. I like the simplified way uh, approach she used. Um, there was a point where she was talking about you start a small and you you know make it bigger that you, you dream big but you start small and what she was now going to talk about expanding it people in financial circles they would have used a, a term like scale up that was what she was actually talking about but i like the fact that she didn't say scale up she rather said it exactly the way it is and that's a lot easier for our people to understand so to make this whole strategy thing to make it relatable and give us a quick example my sister-in-law entered the U.S. in 20, in 2008, and she made up her mind that she would save $100 every week, no matter her condition, that she would work and she would save $100, no matter what. It started in 2008. Fast forward to 2018, she told my wife that she wanted to have a property in Lagos, and then we were able to find a property uh, along Lekki, on Lekki Corridor. And all she needed to do was to deposit about 10 million naira. Now, back in 2018, the exchange rate had already moved to somewhere around 300 naira to a dollar or more. So by the time we changed the money, we were able to raise over 10 million naira with just $30,000. Now, let me now go back to what happened at our end. From, 20, from 2008 to 2018, that's a gap of 10 years. If you save $100 per week, in one year, you would have saved $5,200. In 10 years, you would have saved $52,000. The first money she needed to exchange to send 10 million to us was just $30,000. What I'm driving at here, when before you can invest, you have to save. So no savings, no investment. So what that means is that, and one thing is that when you say you want to invest or you want to save, it's a deliberate decision you must take. If you don't take that decision, nothing is going to happen. 
So she made up her mind that she would save that every week and she committed to it. She was really determined and she did exactly what she said she would do. And by 2018, she was able to easily make the deposit. And of course, she owns the house as we speak. So she was able to send us. So what am I trying here? You have to save. If you don't save, you won't have money to invest. And also, when you want to invest, years later, months later, depending on the value, the size of the investment, it's the savings you have made that you will have to draw on. So when you talk about strategy, it's simply as simple as you have to take that deliberate job to save. Because if you don't save, you won't invest. And I'll quickly go to some of our people who have a number of excuses around why they will not save. They will tell you the income is good. But let me be quick to remind you of one thing. So if we have at least two excuses, they will say they have very small income. If you have very small income, that is what you have. And unless you steal, and even stealing has a lot of risks, that is all you have. If you say what you have, so that means that you never that don't have enough. Come live and I use too because if you don't know how to say when you come to one, the time come will be much. That it's likely that you won't do anything. So the the culture of saving must start from when you have next nothing. And as time goes on, you will find that as your income increases, as your resources go up, the cost of and you save even more because you have already developed the habit. Another excuse people are giving today is they won't invest, but it's very hard. That generation that when inflation was not a problem. It's always been the case, and it's not going to get any better. And let me tell you one thing. When you wake up, it's your home. When you wake up, it's your home. And when you have your day. Interestingly, as God will have it in Nigeria, some people are just getting to have to know elsewhere in the world. Some people are sleeping as we speak. In fact, some people are already in tomorrow. What that tells me is that the time you call morning is when you wake up. What do I mean by that? As far as investing is concerned, Today, that the price level is very high, and the inflation is actually making everybody you know, kind of mad. Okay, so if you don't invest today because of your excuse about inflation, you will have nothing, nothing in the future that you can fall on. So to invest, it's a deliberate decision you have to take. And never give this for not investing. Some of us, are probably old enough back in the 90s when I, IPOs came out, the likes of GT Bank, Zenith, all of them came out. Interestingly, at that time, First Bank came out earlier. And the time First Bank came, she, the share price for First Bank was a lot cheaper. By the time GT came to the market, it was a lot higher. So at that time, some people felt that the price of GT Bank and Zenith and all of them, the prices were too high. Probably some people didn't buy because they didn't believe or they felt that, well, it was too expensive. But today, remembering how much those shares sold for, it's almost like they were give, given away free because we know what the prices are, we know where we are today. So what does that tell me? Never, ever give the excuse of the state of the economy as the reason why you are not investing.